My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you. Because there are certain things you can't communicate. You just experience it. You just flow in it. Sometimes when you start talking, you begin to distract yourself. Sometimes when you start talking, you begin to delve out of God's presence. I was just weeping and I just left myself in God's arms. Thank you so much. There are four things that makes a service a blessing. The first thing that makes a service a blessing is the weight of God's presence that comes into that service. The presence of God is his greatest token for humanity. When you begin to interact with God in his realm, you will discover that one of the most precious things that spiritual beings crave is the presence of the Lord. And in the very heights of the heavens, Sometimes what makes for the stature of an entity in the spirit is where he's standing in God's presence. When Gabriel appeared to Zacharias, he didn't introduce himself as an archangel. He didn't introduce himself as a being of mysteries. The greatest thing that Gabriel had as a possession in the spirit was where he stood before God. And when he introduced himself, he said to Zacharias, he said, I am Gabriel that standeth in the presence. It costs so much for the presence of God to be given to a generation. And so when you come into a service and the presence of God begins to fitter into that service, maturity in the spirit demands that you suspend everything you are doing and internalize it. Because one of the many things the presence of God will do for you is that it will transform you. What makes you become more like God is not how much you really know about God. There are many theologians that know so much about God, but they have no experiential relationship with God. One of the things that makes a man become like God is how much of, of the presence that man carries. And so sometimes when a man enters a place with the presence of God, he doesn't need to talk the presence of God will begin to, co to command its protocol and things will happen on their own accord. So one, th one reason we gather like this is so that we can absorb more presence. Because when you go into the world, you will need it. The arguments with men, the crisis of life, the challenges you face, one of the things it comes to do is to cause the presence of God to leak out of your life. And that's why sometimes when you are in, engaged in a serious argument, or something affects you so deeply, you find yourself dry. Because it comes to deplete you. And so when we gather together like this, one of the precious things God do for us or does for us is that he releases his presence. And the beautiful thing about the presence is that men don't regulate it. And so sometimes it's when the prayers are going on that the weight of the presence comes into the building. If you are discerning, you will align. Sometimes it's when the worship is going on that the presence is heavy in the beauty. And so while he was ministering, the presence of God was strong. And I was just weeping. And I knew the service is already blessed because God has visited. The second thing that makes a service worthwhile is the move of God's power. The power of God is what addresses the crisis of men. Man is bedeviled with a lot of crises. And as I begin to share tonight, you will see. If we took a census here tonight, you will, you will discover that 60 to 70% of the people that came here came with issues that troubled them. So when men come to God's presence or come to a fellowship like this, 
they are trusting that the power of God will locate them and to meet them at the point of their needs. Because the power of God will make a difference as touching your circumstances and the things that surround your life. When the power of God is cast, men will go through crisis and they will be helpless. So when we gather together like this, we come to make contact with power. Sometimes you can be anointed, but you discover that the issues contending you, they are bigger than what you know and carry. So he said, behold, how beautiful and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in harmony. Something happens there. There's an anointing that flows from the head through the beard down to the skirt. That anointing comes to address the crisis of man. And so when we come for fellowship meetings like this, we know that the power of God, we address an issue. So when the power of God is present in a meeting, then you are in a, you are in a blessed environment. The third thing that happens to you in a meeting like this is that you receive precision as touching the truth of God. And so the ministry of the word is very important in a service. The ministry of the word is very important in a gathering. No matter how much you feel in a gathering, if you cannot receive a tangible instruction from God, your life will be without direction. Your life will be without help. Because the word of God is the greatest insurance system that God makes available to men. When you find a generation that is struggling, most times it's because there is a scarcity of God's word in their lives. So people sometimes gather together, they are just excited. But the excitement does not translate to definite direction because the word of God does not come in its tangibility and in its specificity. So even though the man comes to God's presence, he goes back and is still confused because what he requires as a weapon of success in life, he doesn't have it. And so one thing we ensure whenever we gather like this is to make sure the word of God comes forth. So the person leading prayers is bringing the word of the Lord by the Spirit. The person worshipping is bringing the word of the Lord by the Spirit. And when the time comes for the counsel of God to be communicated, the word of God comes with precision. When you come into a service and you receive the word of God with precision, even if you don't feel anything, if you are mature, you know you are blessed. Because that word, you will carry it with you like a weapon. And in the day of crisis, it will come handy. The fourth thing that makes a service a blessing is the love of the Father. When we come into a service like this, we want to experience God's love. Our world is full of bitterness. Our world is full of hate. Our world is full of wickedness and envy. And so many times, the only place of refuge you can run to is that place where you, you come into the warm embrace of the Father. And then you know that no matter how dark and treacherous the world is, there is a place of refuge. There is a place where you are accepted as you are. There is a place where you are helped and you are made to stand. There's a place where you don't meet with condemnation. There's a place where you know and touch the essence of God, which is love. And when you carry that love from that service, you discover that everywhere you go to, you begin to give out the fragrance of that love. When people hurt you, you don't give them hurt in return because you don't have hurt in your spirit. What you have in your spirit is the love of the Father. So you are no longer like a man. You have become like an immortal. You function from his realm. Because most of the times, why we are defeated in life is because we are like what we want to fight. And so when the devil comes to you, he will find something. He will find envy. He will find hatred. He will find wickedness. And no matter how capital letter your tongue sound, you are still vulnerable. Because when he comes, he will find something that is of his. But when you come into a service and you come into the ambience of God's love, you will discover you will be rid of everything that is of the devil. And you come into your world and pour the fragrances of Abba. And you touch the world, a dying world, with the love of God. These things are scarce. You can't find them anywhere. Only in God's presence are they found. Why is it important to share things like this? Because sometimes when we come for a service, we don't even know what to look for. Sometimes when we come for a service, we just want to be excited and go away. We don't even know what to look out for. So many times when the word of God is going on, people are distracted. Because they didn't come to, they, did, they don't know they came to carry with them words. You came to receive word. You came to receive light. 
That's what you leave the service with. You didn't come to make friends primarily. You came to take something that will give you an advantage in the world. You came to mingle with God's presence so that you are transformed. You become a better person. Because when you get to heaven, there will be no register of how many times you went to church. When you get to heaven, there will be no register of how many times you made appearance in the fellowship. But who you become is what the Father is looking out for. And so as we progress in our walk with the Lord, you have to be mindful of these things so that you will know when you are blessed and you will know when you are just excited. So you will know what you carry from a meeting and then you can treasure it. Because if you don't know what to take from a meeting, you may leave a meeting and you will lose it even before you get home. Make sure you leave this service today saturated with the presence that you have carried. Don't let anything diffuse it. Because as you leave this meeting, if you are not careful, the first person you call on the phone will choke and diffuse what you carried. And even though you came for a service, you thought it was a powerful service, you didn't, make, you didn't benefit from it. Because the presence of God that you were saturated with, it didn't even last with you for one day. You make a call and you enter into an argument and it, it diffuses away. You may leave this service and you will not catch a word for yourself. You will just look around and be excited. I've become very careful in exciting people. Because I discover I talk to young people. So many times when I'm talking, the moment I start touching mysteries, they start shouting, they start jumping, they start running. But if you check their lives, you can't see the result of the mysteries they are interacting with. Because they don't take words. They just get excited and they are out. No. If we will raise a generation, we must teach them the things that matter. Every week, there should be a word that your spirit has caught. And you have put that word to work and you have seen results. And then you know that I picked this word from here. I used it and this is the outcome. And as you keep doing it like that, you can gauge how your life makes progress. You can tell where you were and you can tell where you are and you can also tell where you will be. That's why we gather together. And tonight, we thank God for his presence. But the word of God is also coming and you will receive something and you will use it to make your life more beautiful and glorious in the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's not my message, by the way. Agune chamber. Agune chamber. Yeshua. Hamashia. Lion of Judah. Agune chamber. Yeshua, Hamashia, Lion of Judah, Agune Chimba. You know, last week we began to look into the word of the Lord. And we said, a generation must rise. And the generation the Lord is looking out for, it's not a generation of prophets. It's not a generation of teachers. It's not a generation of apostles. It's not a generation of evangelists. It's not a generation of pastors. We said the generation the, world is look, the Lord is looking for is a generation of kings, of priests, and of sons. When a man attains the stature of a son, a king and a priest, the Lord can send him out with the mandate of the kingdom. That man is called an apostle. But he's actually a son, a king and a priest carrying the kingdom. When you see a son, a king and a priest carrying the burden of the kingdom, he's called an apostle. When you see a son, a priest and a king speaking for God, he's called a prophet. But primarily, it's not an apostle and a prophet that makes the difference in the kingdom. It's a son a king and a prophet and the reason is because we saw that the stature of the man Jesus in his greatest expression was as a son a king and a prophet and so anybody that attains that height has completed the sequence of growth in the realm of mortals because Jesus is the pattern man Jesus 
is God's ideal man. And God's standard of measuring men is not by their best abilities. Yesterday, you may do something great. God is not going to measure you based on how great you did what you did. God's standard of measuring men is Christ. You may raise the dead yesterday. That's beautiful. You may do something mighty in the territory yesterday. That's glorious. But when God wants to measure you, he won't measure you by your best. He won't measure you by your greatest success. When God wants to measure you, he will measure you by Christ. Because Christ is his standard. And so when the Bible was teaching us through the Apostle Paul in Ephesians from chapter 4 verse 11. He said the reason God gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers is not to heal the saint. Will the saints be healed? Yes. The saints will be healed because they are still growing to understand what divine health is. He said the reason he gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers is not to bless them and to prophesy over them. He said the reason he gave these offices is to mentor them and to teach them until they come to the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. And I say when you want to understand the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ, how do you trace it in scripture? It's only at the time when Jesus himself began to veto himself and he asked the question. He said, who do men say I, the son of man, I am? Just in case you want to weigh me in the balances of God, who will you say I am? I know many people who have many opinions and true to his thoughts, they had many opinions because when the apostles began to speak in Matthew chapter 16 from verse 16, they said, some say you are Elias. Some say you are John the Baptist returned from the dead. Some say you are Jeremiah and others say you are one of the prophets. And Jesus obviously saw that their theological seminary did not have a touch with reality. They read the Torah. They read the writings of Moses, but they didn't have reality. You know, Jesus said, you search the scriptures. He said, for daring you think you have eternal life. He said, but I am the life. You do not come to me to have life. So even though these guys had mastered the Torah, when the most important question was asked, they didn't know who they were looking for. They had read the Torah, but they have not met him. And so having understood that as bogus as the schools of the law that existed were where but without knowledge he decided to ask the apostles at least you have followed me for a while you should have been delivered from the ignorance of the schools of the law who do you say i the son of man am you know when jesus meets the crowd he multiplies fish and feeds a thousand people when jesus meets the crowd he brings healing but when he comes do you know that jesus had to stay with 500 men even though multitudes were coming to him because there are many things you can't discuss with a crowd when he meets the crowd, he gives healing. When he meets the crowd, he gives fish. But when he came to the disciples, you will be shocked that he never organized a healing service with the disciples. When you read the whole synoptic gospels, there was never a time when Jesus sat down and taught them word of knowledge. There was never a time when Jesus sat down with them and taught them most of the things that he did with the crowd. When he met them, he was interested in something else. Because when they become the things he gives, they too will become givers. They will no longer be receivers. They will be givers. So the burden in the heart of Jesus was to make them givers because Jesus knew that he won't stay on earth for too long. And when he leaves the earth, the crowd will not profit the kingdom. So when he gathers this man, he begins to say the things that really matter. When you are studying the gospel and you want to find out the things that really matter, they are not the things Jesus did with the crowd. They are the things he did with the disciples. And in this context, he was asking them, who do you say I am? Because it's possible for you to walk with me for 10 years and you don't know who I am. Benny Him told the story of a great evangelist. He traveled to India. And this evangelist was the one, his interpreter was the one that drove him to the airport. And while they were going to the airport, he asked the interpreter, for how long have you interpreted for this evangelist? The man checked, checked and said 25 years. And he now asked the interpreter, he, didn't, he said himself didn't know why he asked the question. But he said, are you born again? And the man said, no. <laughs> you are shocked. Are you born again? He said, no. He said, why? He said, well, 
he thought he was just doing his job to help other people. So for 25 years, he led other people to Christ, but he didn't know Jesus. He thought it was a show. When they come into the stadium and people gather and people are shouting, he is interpreting with energy. The man will interpret, will interpret. The man will speak, he will interpret. But he didn't know that he is, him too is part of those they are talking to. He thought they were talking to the crowd and he was transferring the message to the crowd. I can assure you that some people can be workers in church and they will never meet Jesus. And they will walk in church for many years. So Jesus didn't want to take the risk. So he asked the disciples, I understand if those out there don't know me, but who do you say I am? And no one knew. Because even Peter who answered, it was at that moment that heaven opened. <laughs> they had followed Jesus for close to three years. Nobody knew him. When Peter spoke, Jesus said, you don't know this thing. I know, I know that being around doesn't translate to understanding. He said, I know you too don't know. This thing you just said, it was my heavenly, it's my heavenly father who is in heaven that opened your understanding. So this thing came now. That means if Jesus didn't draw his attention to it, on the day of resurrection, they wouldn't have known him. Can you imagine the damage that would have been? He said, even you don't know. It's my father who just told you now. But the question or the answer we are looking for tonight is that Peter said, you are the Christ. The son of the living God. It's from this scripture that we understood the full stature of the man Christ. Not the God Christ. You know, Jesus is both man and God. So we are talking about the man context. Since we are not God in the order of Elohim, we need to understand his dimension as a man and walk in it. And so the man Christ sustained the stature as Christ and son of the living God. Now, if you check the word Christ, it's the word Christos. The word Christos was translated from the Hebrew word Mashiach. And the word Mashiach was used 39 times in the Old Testament. And in those 39 times, 37 times, it was translated as the anointed one. It was only twice it was translated as messenger. And so when you trace the Christ, you are talking about a being called the anointed one. So if you want to understand the anointing, you have to go back to the Old Testament to find out who are the anointed people in the Old Testament. You will discover that the word Mashiach was used only when a king is anointed. The word Mashiach is used only when a priest is anointed. And the word Mashiach is used when a prophet is anointed. So when Jesus is called the Christos, if you trace it in its word, in its literal meaning, He's talking about the king. He's talking about the priest. And he's talking about the prophet. So when Peter said, you are the Christ, <coughs> what Peter was saying is that you are the king. You are the priest. You are the son of the living God. And so everybody who comes to the fullness of the stature of Christ will not just be a healer. He will not just be a prophet. He will not just be an apostle. He must also function in the order of the king. He must function in the order of the priest. And he must function in the order of the son of the living God. That's why when he resurrected from the grave, he didn't call them apostles. He said, go and tell the disciples that my father and your father. That means they had come into sonship. In sonship, there's many things they can do. Go and tell them that I'm going to my father and to their father. Because what bothers the heart of Jesus is when he returns to the world, he wants to find kings. He wants to find priests. And he wants to find prophets. You see, man may not understand this. That what the devil is interested in is to ensure that you don't get into the fullness of your reality. When he showed up in the Garden of Eden, he was not bothered about taking away the things that the man had. When the devil showed up in the Garden of Eden, he wanted to truncate the growth process of the man. Because he knows that if he truncates the growth process, the man will always beg for the things that he should command. So when the devil comes, he's not just looking at the things you have. He wants to stop you perpetually from becoming the order of the stature of Christ. And if he can stop you from becoming that, 
all your life you'll be running in pursuit of the things you should command and so you may run to healing service and when you receive healing you say thank you jesus jesus will receive the thanks but jesus is jesus is hard to be grieved because jesus is not just interested in giving you healing he's wanting why can't you walk in divine health there is something better than healing when you come for a service and we prophesy and a breakthrough happen and you come and say thank you jesus he will receive the thanks but what he's looking for is why can't you command all things don't you know that all things are yours you can't know those things because your growth process has not been completed my brother apostle lawa works in the miraculous and many times when we come for a healing meeting you know that the anointing you came with for example i can pray for the sick now and he'll be healed but you know that what the people need is not just the healing so many times you will labor to open scriptures open scriptures you want to build their faith because you know that they need to walk in this thing if not they will keep coming back that's the burden in the heart of jesus and the reason is because if man does not grow the realm where he's living in is too hostile the things he receives he will lose them and come back again and over time that man will become a slave of things whenever he shows up he will be showing up because he needs something but God does not want the man to show up because he needs something. That's why before God allowed the man liberty, he gave him everything he needed. So when the man shows up, he's coming for deeper communication. Because there are things and dimensions in God that he wants the man to explore. You know, when you make a new friend, every day you know him better. You know him better. He may give you things, but the idea behind the relationship is for you to explore the dimensions. So what God is looking for in fellowship is to bring us to a point where when we show up we are not coming to ask god for things we are looking for secret dimensions in god that is not available so that we will catch it and we will reveal it to our generation but unfortunately because men have not grown up when they come to god they are distracted by things they keep asking for things and god is saying grow up grow up because if you keep receiving things you will keep needing things but when you grow to become a, a worker of those things, you will not need those things anymore. And if you think it's a lie, Jesus showed up again in John chapter 10 verse 10. And he began to tell man some secrets. He said, before you came here, there were spirits here. You are not the first creature on earth. There were many spirits here that came before you. That's why I need you to grow into dominion. Because if I give you what I'm giving you, the spirits that are in this realm are older than you. They will take it away from you again. Everything you think you can have when you have it, sometimes those spirits will not even take it from you. They will make you a slave of those things. And those things will become the reason why you may never grow again. So he said in John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, the devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. The devil cometh not. What Jesus was revealing to them is not even about the activity of the devil primarily. What Jesus was revealing to them is that where you are, you are not alone. There are other beings where you are. There are other beings that have come to where you are and they are contending with you for ownership of that realm. So you need to first of all understand that you are not alone. There are other spirits here that want to take over what rightly belongs to you. You are not alone here. There are spirits here. And he said those spirits are in different order. He said one of them are the devils. And what the devils do is that they kill. The first thing they want to do is to take away your right in the realm of God. The life that you have, the authority that you have. That's what he's looking for. When he takes it, he will now destroy and he will now steal from you. He said, but not to worry. The devil is not the only person around. He said, I too am come. Because I saw that the devil came. You know, the devil came first. He said, because I saw that the devil came, me too, I had to come. That means man's greatest achievement in life is the degree to which he fraternizes with the spirit that controls the realm. Because if he does not know how to fraternize with those spirits, he will become a puppet and a slave in the realm where he's living. Because there are some spirits that came and there's another spirit that has come. The spirits that came are the wicked spirits of this world. But the other spirit that have come is the spirit of Elohim that came to give the man liberty. If this man does not understand that he's in a league of spirits, he will be pursuing things and he will know that those things are the things that the spirit will use to bargain his soul. So what the man should be looking for are not things. What the man should be looking for is intimacy with those spirits to find the right spirit and to fraternize with him. Because it is the depth 
of his fraternity with that spirit that will determine the advantage that he has in time, not the things he has. Even the greatest thing you have can become a weapon against you if a spirit that is wiser than you takes control. That's why people use money today to self-destruct. That's why people use cars today to self-destruct. I was watching the news two years ago of a popular musician. The word they use is blow. So he released the song and he, he blew. <laughs> when he blew, what the spirit whispered into his ear is to buy a Lamborghini. And when he bought the Lamborghini, the same spirit that was luring him, lured him into a party. And he went to a club and he drank until 2 a.m. Those of you who are current in that world, you know who I'm talking about. At 2 a.m., he now carried two gears in his car. And the way they were playing the music, the car was shaking like this. And the guy was running on high speed. So what happened is that that thing he was doing was a spiritual algorithm. The spirit was directing his step to destruction. So what happened to the guy was that at about 2.30 a.m., he ran into a ditch. And him and the ladies died. So what the spirit did was that he used the inspiration of a song to produce an album. He used the album to blow the guy. And when he blew the guy, he really blew him. So when you don't know the spirits that control the league, what you call a, call a blessing can become a curse. So what Jesus was teaching them is before you consider things, he said, make fraternities first. The devil came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. You know those things Jesus was saying, if, unless you enter the spirit realm, you will not understand that he actually gave man a leakage because that's a manifesto. You know, when a politician is, is vying for an office, he gives a manifesto. He will stand like our politicians. Everything they are saying, you know, is a lie. I will, I will bring quality education. Anyone they say, just know it's the opposite. I will make sure light and power is stable. I will bring water. I will ensure security. They are all lies. So, <laughs> when Jesus showed up, he said, my name is ancient of days. I was around when the devil made his manifesto. You were not there because you are 70 years old. You are a baby. The realm where we sit, we saw the devil. And when the devil made his manifesto in the spirit, he said, my own assignment is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So if you are wise, don't fraternize with him. If you are wise, come into a deeper fraternity. Because before the devil made the manifesto, there is somebody called I am. The word I am means I was. I currently am. And I will be. So I know the devil and his plans. And I know where all his plans will end. So when he said I am come, it's not English he's speaking. What he's actually telling you is that the beginning and the end is here. The devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But I am has come. So when you know, what you need to do is to find I am. Is to interact with I am. Because when you interact with I am, you will become a lord over the devil. But if you don't interact with the I am, you will become a slave of the devil. So what God was telling man there, is not that I will bring you provision. He was giving the man a choice. A choice of either becoming a captain over the devil or of becoming a slave of the devil. I am is come to give you an opportunity. Because in I am, you can journey to a place that is older than the devil. Because I am existed before the devil came. I am is existence. So when you come into I am, everything the devil knows, you will know more. Because you will become older than him. You will be in him. And if you, become, if you come into I am, where the devil is going to, you will know it. So on the strength of your interaction with I am, you will become older than the oldest. That's why you may look young and they look at you, they say, how old you are you? You are judging by age in time. I am relating with I am. If I'm relating with I am, I've stepped out of time. I've gone to the foundation of reality. That's where we live from. That's what Jesus called life to the full. Life to the full is not to have many things. Because if it's about many things, the Bible will be contradicting itself. He say a man's life does not constitute in the multitude of his possession. So what Jesus was talking about is to come into a place where you become a controller over the affairs of life. So that the devil's impute 
will count for nothing. If he likes, he should sum us out. When he finishes doing it, you know where he's going to. And you become wiser than the devil. That's the journey of I am. So for you to be able to become a king, a priest, and a prophet, you must interact with the different dimensions of I am. Becoming a king and a prophet is not a willful desire. It's a journey of intimacy. Because when he spoke about life, he wasn't talking about breath. He was talking about interaction. In John 17 verse 3, he said, This is life eternal, that you may know him. So the depth of I am that you know is what will determine your level of authority in the natural realm. And Jesus did not make it difficult. He began to break, you know, there are seven dimensions that the Bible revealed to us that grants us access into the knowledge of God. The first dimension is actually the I am dimension. In the I am dimension, the Bible gave us seven tributaries. And I want to talk about one this evening, briefly, before we move. If you study the scriptures, especially in the book of John, there were seven times Jesus used I am. The first time he said I am, he said I am the resurrection and the life. That's why when he said I am come, he said you will have life to the full because I am is resurrection and life. The second time he used I am, he said I am the bread of life. The third time he used I am, he said I am the door. The fourth time he used I am, he said, I am. Who follows me? Who is following me? Who is following me? I am the way, the truth, and the life. The fifth time he used I am, what did he say? He said, I am the good shepherd. The sixth time he used I am, he said, I am divine. I am divine. What Jesus was trying to reveal to us is that you don't just know me on the street. For you to know me, there are channels you need to enter. It's either you come in through life and resurrection, or you come in through the door, or you come in through the way. And the seventh time he said, I am the light of the world. Or you come in through the light. If you don't find Christ through any of this access way, you will be a slave of the devil. And so the journey of man on the earth is to find different channels into I am kingdom pursuit is not things is how many dimensions of I am you have found for some of you you will find light and when you find light everything the devil is doing is open to you you can read his move like a book and that light will become direction that light will become strength when those things begin to happen to you it means you are beginning to grow into the stature of Christ because Jesus himself revealed to us how we can find him he said, one of the ways you can find me is to find light. He said, the second way you can find me is to eat the bread. If you find the bread that came from heaven, you will find me. He said, the third way you can find me is to drink of the vine. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit. He said, the fourth way you can find me is to be granted access. That's what we call revelations and encounter. A door opens to you and you come in. You didn't read it, but you know it. He said, the fifth way you can find me is to come in. Because I'm a teacher. I will open your heart and I will teach you my oracles. When you begin to enter these doors, it means you are growing. So one thing we do when we gather together like this is to explore the many dimensions of I am. And when you begin to explore it, you will discover that something begins to happen to you. The things that happen to you are no longer earthly. You can just lie down in your room and because you have met I am, he begins to educate you from within. You will now realize that the Christian life is heavier inside than is outside. When your Christianity is heavier outside, you have not met him. Because when you meet him, your heart will become a school. Many activities will be going on at the same time. And you are one, people will wonder what is going on here. You are in another world. Because you must be taught in that world before you can colonize this world. But if you learn from this world, you will be part of the problem. Acting as if you are a solution. You can't bring solution until you enter into it. If you don't go through that door, if that light does not appear to you, if you don't eat of that bread, if you don't make contact with the resurrection, there is no way you can make change in your life. So when Christians are no longer pursuing, I am come. When Christians are not joining into, I am come. They are not making progress. Everything they have can become the reason for their misfortune. And so I am was one of the channels Jesus revealed to the world of finding him. Let's consider I am life. This evening quickly because we don't have so much time i am 
the resurrection and the life is one of the dimensions of knowing Jesus you see when you come to Christ one thing he wants to do one encounter he will give you is that he will give you life but the thing with the encounter of life is that you don't feel it because life is a journey when I am wants to bring you to his realm and to his stature one of the encounters he gives you is life when he gives you the encounter of life what will happen is that you will grow in it and as you grow in it you will discover a point will come when when men look at you they will know that you are functioning from another realm they will know that you are functioning by another inst another resource they will know that you are communicating from another dimension so the journey of christianity is encounters with i am and one of the encounters is the encounter of life when a man has the encounter of life the first thing that happens to him is what we call a knowing a knowing i'm showing you a dimension of christianity that is not on the buffet i'm showing you a dimension of christianity that requires solitude i'm showing you a dimension of christianity that requires responsibility i'm showing you why there is so much activity but there are many babes because we don't know the organics we know the common we know the trending we know the popular if i call for a healing service now i can begin to walk healing from the beginning but you'll be shocked that many people will go back they will fall sick again and they will never grow all the people jesus healed were sinners all the people he rose from the dead they died again but there were other people that by the bible never recorded that jesus healed there were other people the bible never recorded that jesus prophesied over but suddenly those ones when jesus left they showed up and when men looked at them they said ah they took note that these ones have been with christ he never healed them but there is another thing he taught them that's why he took them to the mountain it was a school of life i know that when i come down to the valley i say be healed everybody in the city will be healed but encounters of life is not by a declaration it's a journey encounters of life is not by a commandment the bible said when the evening was come in matthew chapter 8 verse 16 they brought all that were sick to him and he said that they may touch him and he said virtue went out of him and healed them all that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet the land of the land of Zebulun, the land of naphtali he said they that were in darkness have seen great light he healed them all but when he wanted to bring the encounters of life he took them to the mountain for three days because in the encounters of life it's a syllable it's a protocol it will keep unveiling many times our christianity becomes too distracting that we no longer pay attention to the encounters of life because when it comes into your spirit it will become a law over your soul it will draw your attention it will require your focus and your commitment but too many times we don't develop it so we are big on the outside but when you check us inside we are so small we cannot sense when a signal is activated meanwhile that signal that is activated may be a summon to high quarters because life is speaking you know there is not only the holy ghost that is on your inside talking even life itself has a voice life has an utterance that's why when a child is born they, you, do, you don't hear any transmission the child knows hunger hunger will communicate to the child and the child begins to look for what to eat and you are wondering how did you know that food passes through the mouth there's an educational syllable the mom doesn't teach the child that you eat from the mouth hope you know that when the child was in the pregnancy in the womb the child was eaten by umbilical cord the child never ate with the mouth but the day the child came out all of a sudden he begins to look for things to put in the mouth who taught the child that you eat from the mouth because life itself is an educational syllable life itself it will train you it will teach you but when your christianity is full of distraction you will not learn the whispers of life so when life is talking you will be running and doing things that's why after many years you will not grow because if that child does not learn how to eat that child will die after one week when you encounter the life the life becomes a teaching the life becomes a training the life becomes a way it will educate you and the teachings of life are silent because it doesn't want any other person to hear it is specific to you as you are sitting here now if you are pressed nobody will know life will speak to you in the most silent fashion because it's an organic communication but if you don't go out to ease yourself you will become most uncomfortable and the next person sitting by your side will be wondering why are you so uncomfortable i'm hearing something very loud but you can't hear it even if you are my best friend 
It will be so loud that you can't sit down anymore. But the next person can't hear it. Because they are in audible utterances. They are intangible communication. But the impact can kill. The impact can awaken. That's how God raises men through life. He brings them into a syllable. When a man makes an encounter with life, the first thing that happens is a knowing. It's a knowing. You need to understand all your spiritual faculties. And you need to understand how they speak to you. When hunger comes, it's different from when you are pressed. The responses are different. When you function like that, you are not a man of activity. You are an organic man. And that's how spiritual life also is. You need to know when there is danger, you pick it here. And as you pick it, you leave. People don't know why. It's not word of knowledge. It's not the Holy Ghost that spoke to you. It's an inaudible utterance that proceeds from life. But if you don't get there, you can't be like the Christ. You can never be like the Christ. That life will speak to you sometimes. When you say the wrong thing, you lose your peace. And then somebody else is saying, what happened? You say, I can't sleep. Why? I spoke against this brother. And then, they, uh, uh, I beg, forget. Is he? He's the weight of life that you carry. Another person can speak against a brother and he's smiling. It's a normal thing. He feels okay. But you, that you join that conversation, you will now lose your peace. And then you go to God and you are apologizing. And the people are wondering, what did you do? You say, I'm sorry. I spoke against my brother. You are in two different realms. One is functioning by life. The other one is a religious man. He doesn't know where you are. It's an economy that works in the Christ. The way Jesus lived his life is by functioning by the motions of life. It was so strong in him that sometimes when Jesus is even traveling, life will restrain him. You will hear that Jesus must go through Samaria. The Holy Ghost didn't talk, but life is governing the direction that he will go. If you want to grow in this kingdom, you must begin to function by the sensitivities of life. There are many things that life is telling you that you didn't hear. Imagine if you were a child and you were born, you didn't eat for one week. You didn't eat for one month. Imagine if you, at your level of maturity now, you don't ease yourself for one week. It will be something that will require intensive care. Be why that's how most of us are in the spirit. Activities cannot replace life. The operations of life, they are embedded in you. When life comes, there's a protocol. The first protocol is in knowing. That's why Jesus said, this is life eternal. That you may know. That you may know. That you may know. And many times when people don't know, God now sends messengers to tell them. Because if they are not taught and brought into that awareness, they can't grow. I'm assuring you, you can give all your money. You can give all your possession. You will think you are pleasing God by giving. And because you are happy about it, you will give until you will give your all, but you will not grow. And then you are wondering, because even the feedback system of the spirit, you have not been told to pay attention to it. So when you went to give, you left and God now spoke. Your answer came, but you don't know how it works. And then you are waiting for external things. Our spirituality is not all external. The deeper part of our Christianity is internal. But unfortunately, many believers have negated the internal dimension. That's why even though they are walking, they are not alive. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 11, he said when you receive Jesus, it was not a religious activity. When you received Jesus, he said you had an encounter with life. So he began to tell them, he said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know. That you may know. Life will insist that you know that you have eternal life. It's written to you. Since you cannot pick the frequency, God sends men to remind you that the heaviest part of you is not external. I know you can talk loud. I know you can pray. But there is something at work on your inside that you are not paying attention to. Many times God speaks to you from inside much more than he speaks from outside. How come you are used to the external but you can't pick the internal? He says you can't grow. So these things have I written unto you that you may know that you have eternal life. So when a man receives Jesus, he's not coming to learn how life works. It's already there. All you need to do is to draw his attention to it. This is where his victory begins from. When a man knows that there's something at work on his inside, next time he wakes up and he hears a song he will drop his phone and start singing that song because he knows that song is not coming because he heard somebody sing it he knows that song is life giving amplification to an organic thing happening on the inside that is not church activity that is operation of the spirit within you life is at work sometimes you wake up and you want to eat 
and then it looks as if eating is a sin you are very hungry but you know that life is placing a demand and the moment you know now that there's life you will keep the food aside and you begin to walk around you want to find out what is life saying that i don't know what is this saying? It's because sometimes the whisper is very faint so you need to you need to pay attention and so sometimes you quickly step out of the room and then you go somewhere early in the morning and then people are wondering is he mad you know these things can become so strong that sometimes while you are walking alone you are walking like this and somebody is looking at you and say jesus what's happening to him you you are trying to connect to a frequency there's an alignment pattern there's an alignment pattern the whispers are too faint anything can can break that frequency and because you don't want it to go you you are following it carefully and after a while it will become louder it will become louder you will now hear that take a fast for three days that three days is your safety sometimes the bottle of oil they poured on your head can't save you because your safety is in a discernment that must be activated and life have checked that you are rusty so he said take a three days fast because on the third day which is the evil day i need you to pick the frequency and when you take that fast maybe you woke up on the third day and you stepped out of your house you want to open your car he said no not car today your car will be packed you will take an uber people can't understand that's when you become like the wind that blow it he said thou list that's not from whence it cometh or where it going he says so are they that are born by the spirit it's an organic protocol when jesus said whoever is born of god overcometh the world he wasn't telling us a parable he was telling us things that happen to men when they grow when men grow they become invincible because that life is so personal even if the devil put his ear on your chest he can't pick those vibrations because it's networking to you and so the devil will be around but his presence will not matter that's why i said even if we walk through the valley of the shadow of death we will fear no evil there's something happening in us he said the life is the light of man and he said the light shines in the darkness the darkness can't comprehend it he can't understand because it's an intangible language you are wondering how did they know that we were waiting here life spoke and the man mastered it he paid attention to it many times sometimes when life discovers that your ear in the spirit is rusty it will tell you to go on a 40 days fast it's not religion forget you can fast with your church in january that's beautiful it's corporate exercise but if you want to grow you need more than 21 days january fast you need sometimes it will take 90 days because god wants to promote you but the place is promoting you they are hyenas there hyenas that want to eat you up so life will have to prepare you first and then it tells you for 90 days take a fast sometimes you want to sleep and life will wake you up you can't sleep now you can't sleep that's why my friend was preaching he said the times when kings go to war they, these are intangible alarms it's so loud but your neighbor can't hear it if those knowings don't happen your christianity is fake not because you want to be fake but everything you do it will look spiritual but it will have no root in the realm where it matter when you want to see a true believer he functions by the motions of life whatever he offers must come to pass because those things they came from the realms of the i am when the courts alter their oracles it beams into you through the life that's why he puts it in you so that you can hear things that me ordinary men can hear it's a product of intimacy it's a product of fraternity too many christians are dead on the inside they can't pick the signals we are many but we are weak because we don't know life it begins with a knowing some of you as you hear these words you will discover that that engine on your inside that was rusty is beginning to shake and when you leave this service life will now tell you this night pray to the morning something has started and then in the night you are walking in your room you are praying you are praying and then you think the prayer ends in the morning it doesn't end in the morning when the morning comes he will now tell you this week read the book of john and then you are wondering why do i need to read the book of john he's looking for how to energize your spirit you have been rusty you didn't exercise for long those days when we were younger we will go to the field sometimes once in a month and then you that ran to run around the field ten times you now round for five minutes you are pretty <laughs> as if you want to die it's been long the veins have become stiff the flexibility is no longer there so when life wants to drill you the encounters take a while he will drill you until you come you become flexible 
And so when you become flexible, even if a whisper pass, you can pick it. And then you say, ah, oh, I just saw an angel. And somebody look at you and say, ah, is that how easy it is to see angels? You are walking in different dimension. But when we become mature, that day will come. When everybody will know the frequency. If you pick a wrong song, everybody will know that you are in the flesh. You'll be jumping. Hey, hey, everybody look, look, see what people look at you like. You are in the flesh. Just step aside, step aside. Because, you know, that life hates death. So when you do things of the flesh, it will be irritated. You are singing a gospel song, people are irritated. And you are saying, is it not Jesus I'm glorifying? You are, it's your flesh you are glorifying. You want to dance because you think it's a show. So you come, you do like this, you do like this. This is not a show. Life will resist you. And when you are functioning in the flesh, everybody will look at you and say, get out. And suddenly you move, somebody else comes. And that person is singing a song. They don't know the song, but life is communicating with life. That's Christianity. Until we come there, we are not strong. We can't fight the battles of the age. And so the encounter every believer must have is the encounter of life. This one is not taught in the Bible school. It's a journey with the Holy Ghost. He will strengthen it from the inside. When knowing comes, then maturity has begun. The journey of life. This is why Christianity in Africa is weak. You know, when Pastor Victor was praying, some people started praying. They thought it was five minutes. When the prayer reached 15 minutes, they discover life is not enough. When the prayer reached 30 minutes, some people advised themselves and sat down and began to do like this. But if you know how life works, that point where you are weak, that's when you are beginning to touch the engine. It's no longer about how long they want to pray. Something is dying here. I want to resurrect it. So even though you don't feel like it, you now discover we walk by faith, not by sight. You are staring something. And if you activate that thing, you will sense ventilation. Encounter with I am. It's an encounter with life. Some of you have life, but that life is dead. Because you don't know how long. You don't know when you touched it. You don't know. You have activated your emotion. Your emotion is too strong. When they sing a song, you know you are jumping like this. When they change the song, you become like this. Because it's emotion you are working with. Life is not being touched. But when the Holy Ghost wants to help you, He will bring you back to the corridor of life. And for some of you, for life to be stirred, it will take many days of fasting. That kind of fasting now, you don't count days. You count moments. The time when life was touched. A point comes when the Holy Ghost brings you diagnosis of prayer. And then he tells you, pray for four hours every day. The first two weeks you will sleep throughout. But you can't stop. Because it's not about one week. It's not about two weeks. There's something dying that he wants to resurrect. When you don't stop, maybe after one month, you now go to prayer and you, you just sense an energy from inside. You now know, oh, that's when the prayer began. The other ones were exercised. Life is about to quicken. And when it's quicken, kikakaku, you now begin to pray into realms. You now discover prayer is not just loud tongues. Prayer is about bettings. You see, as soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. You now discover prayer is about journeying. Journeying. You can be in your room and you will travel to North Africa. And then when you come back, you will tell the nations what God is saying. is from the economy of life. Too many Christians are not alive. Too many. Hallelujah! Ah, Hallelujah! Oh,
You can be an apostle, but you are dead on the inside. Benihim told a story of a rabbi in Israel. This lady was demonized. They took her everywhere. Everybody prayed for her. Prophets, apostles prayed for her. Nothing happened. But where they lived in Israel, because they are a wealthy family, at the foot of the rock, there was a rabbi that is always indoors. Every time you are passing, as they are passing to go up, the man is citing the Torah. He's reading the Torah and he's prophesying and he's speaking in tongue. They say, this man is a noise speaker. What kind of man is this? When they tried everybody and Christians were not producing results, they now went to imams. Imams too could not produce results. They now said, let's try this man who is always disturbing us at the foot of the rock. And they went and told the man, our daughter is demonized. We don't know, we've done everything. The man now said, go, I'm coming. And two hours later, the man came out of his house and he began to climb the mountain. And he was just talking, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still water. As the man was ascending the rock, the demons began to leave the gear in the house. The moment the man came to the door and opened the door, the lady was delivered. There was no need for prayer. He came with energy. He came with a realm. He came with a dimension. Why do you think we preach and our world is not changing? We are talking things that we read. We are mental, but the weight of life is light. That's why one man can be addressing 5,000 people, but the city can't feel it because it's from head to head. The day it becomes spirit to spirit, you will find men that will turn their world upside down because you don't necessarily need a long sermon. You need weights of glory. But for that to happen, yourself must be cooked and incubated in the chambers of life. There is a knowledge that is scarce among mortals. And so Jesus came to bring us that knowledge. So the idea is not breath. It's so that you can travel back to the conclave where possibilities that are not captured, where mortals dwell, rest. And when you come with those possibilities, even if you say Jesus is Lord, your territory will feel the vibration. That's what we call the statue of the Christos. He carried too much life. When Jesus came down from the mountain, the moment he entered the synagogue, demons began to cry, leave us alone. Leave us alone. Why have you come before your time? Because of life. Because of life. But we don't have it. We have the theological one. The organic one is weak. Because the organic one will disciple you. The organic one will take you through a process. Many times, that life will stop you from sleeping. If you know that growth is not just about church service, you will pay attention. Because it may take 30 days of, of being awake at night for that life to be energized. You may come to church for five years, but they may not touch those cords. Some of you will come here. I will not be able to touch your cord. But when you live here, the Holy Ghost will now give you an instruction. And as you follow, you will discover you will receive things in your bedroom that you could not receive on the crusade ground. It's a knowing. It begins with a knowing. Please sit down. This knowing has three layers. The first layer is consciousness. This is where you move from theology to organic experience. See, when this consciousness comes, you will just know that if I touch that cancer, that cancer will go. You are not coming reciting scripture. There's a place where you are coming and you are quoting scriptures because you are hoping one will work. There's another place where the scriptures have become a part of you because you have walked and interacted with this thing until it has become your consciousness. So when you come, you know if only I touch, things will happen. When you have entered that level, you know you have begun to grow in life. It's a consciousness. That's the consciousness the psalmist had. He said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Many people are coming to church, but they have their own consciousness. Do you know that there are many believers here who, who, know they, who believe they can be cursed? I know you have not told yourself, but anytime you say you want to curse another believer, 
is because you have a consciousness that a believer can be cursed. And because you have that consciousness, even you can be cursed. Do you know there are many believers that think evil will happen to them? A wrong consciousness. They have not interacted with life enough. That's why before he announced life, he talked about death. He talked about destruction. Because when life comes, he rules over death. He rules over destruction. He rules over things taken away. When you, when you think evil of another believer, it's because you think it's possible for evil to happen to a believer. But if you have entered a consciousness where you know that evil can't happen to a believer, you can't think evil of another believer. When you enter a consciousness level where you know that a believer cannot be caused, you can't cause another believer. The reason why we do a lot of religion but we don't have manifestation is because our consciousness is wrong. And our consciousness is wrong because we have not fine-tuned to the Christ. When you fine tune to the Christ, a point comes, you will know that anything that can happen to Jesus can happen to you. This is not theology. This is not religion. It's a reality. That's what life comes to do to you. That's why Paul said, if you say that you are born again, if you believe that your life is hid with Christ and in God, he said, let your consciousness, let your affection be only on the things above. Most times we are saying one thing, our consciousness is saying another thing. The reason is because we've not interacted with life enough. That's why John said, I'm writing to you that you will know. Paul was saying the same thing in 2 Corinthians 5, 17. He said, whoever is in Christ Jesus, he said he's a new creature. He said, all things are passed away. He now said, behold. The key word is behold. It means become aware that every other thing is of God. So anything that is not of God can't happen to you. When you come to that level, you are beginning to journey into dominion. Nothing man does that moves you. There's too much assurance in your spirit because life has been trained. There are too many believers waiting to hear something positive before they are excited. When they hear something positive, they are jumping up and down. When they hear something negative, I travel a lot. Sometimes I want to travel for a great meeting. I will now see myself in a coffin. I'm in a coffin. They are going to bury me. And then the me in the dream is afraid. When I wake up, I say, well, since I saw it, I'm not the one. I don't pray about it. They know. I don't pray about it. If I'm not to go for that journey, I will know. I don't need to see a lying vision. I know. You can't manipulate me. I've been in places, people come, say all kinds of things. Hey, they saw you, you died. <laughs> we don't die. <laughs> you don't know what I heard in the last eight months. But there's too much life. I can't even be worried. Sometimes when they say things and they tell me I laugh, I say it's because we are making impact. Five years ago, when I was not making impact, nobody spoke about me. If people have the time to speak about me, it means I'm making impact. Glory to God. But the thoughts of man can't come to pass. The desires of the evil cannot come to pass because there's something in your, in your life. You are rooted in life. Too rooted for anything to happen to you. It begins with consciousness. When we tell people to meditate on scripture, it's not to know scriptures and quote. It's so that they can grow in the spirit. You become one with it. That's the idea. When we tell men to pray, the goal is not to say, I cancel 10 hours. That's for babes. When you have grown, you know that as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. It's the bettings of prayer you are looking for. You can pray into a place. You can pray into a dimension. You journey by prayer. And when you get there, even 10 hours is too small. Because sometimes you travel too far, you can't come back that day. And then you are just on the floor in your room sobbing. You went too far. You go to certain places in prayer. And then you begin to interact with celestial things. Your body literally begins to burn. You can feel the heat so much. It's as if your hand is on the stove. And while you are unconscious praying, you are crying. Because you have gone too far. You are, you are no longer in control. Your hand is burning. 
you are, you, are, you are hoping and begging that they will withdraw the intensity a bit because you are, you are becoming something else it's the journey of life it takes consciousness to travel but too many believers don't have these experiences because they don't know what to focus on it's not about activity most times workers in church become the most carnal they never hear the word of God they think it's just about doing things if you don't grow what you are doing will be a waste because the point will come you will do it for flesh these things I'm telling you nothing can replace it you may know a lot of principles but you may still be a babe in the realm where it matters because everything you are doing is from your head you can't move here but God is looking for the men that flows from the river of life I told Pastor Victor I said from Monday it's not announced but we'll be praying here for three hours straight no prayer point when you stand pray for one hour straight let something let something affect you a little until something is quickened we are too strong in the flesh hey. when you grow in consciousness then life will take you to another level it's called engagement all of that is still under knowing engagement it is an engagement that you begin to test your muscles sometimes you are walking and then you are at the airport and then you see somebody on the wheelchair and then life will now move you say pray for her <laughs> you will look around pray for who here Christianity is not on the pulpit. It's not on the pulpit. Forget this craze about wearing suit and preaching on the pulpit. If you have not traveled in the corridor of life and you come here, you will bring reproach to the name of the Lord. Sometimes you come to walk and life will move you. Say, talk to your boss. Even you, you will know you want to faint. But it is in that engagement that you are strengthened. And I assure you, when you begin engagement, you will fail many times. That failure is to build conviction. Not because what you are doing is not working. But if it works the first time you did it, you will think you are a champion. You will lose the lesson. So many times when you try it, you will fail. You will try it, you will fail. But life won't let you rest. The last time you went to speak to a lady, she embarrassed you publicly. Life will still drag you to talk to more. The last time you prayed for the sick, you carried her up. She fell down. They almost beat you. Life will still move you. You will do it until a point come. The idea will no longer be manifestation. It will become who you are. So manifestations no longer move you. When it becomes who you are, manifestation becomes the byproduct. Life will take you from consciousness to engagement. I'm showing you. See, Christianity in our generation now is to gather in auditoriums. Those of you who have been believers for the past 15 years, you know that in those days when you gave your heart to Christ, it was about soul winning. It was about going out and praying for the sick. You went house to house. But I assure you now, we are looking for the conferences where the big preachers are coming. That's why we are applauding men, but we are not growing. Because we don't give life enough ventilation. If you give life ventilation, it will first of all set you up before it delivers you. traveled with life when they say I am come he was bringing you into a realm sometimes life will move you to talk to your father this thing you are doing is wrong Jesus said I should tell you your father will look at you like this <laughs> you will go back and cry Lord why and God will keep quiet you are in a school This one is harder than church service. It's deeper than a message. It's an organic process. The man that everybody dreads. Life will tell you, go and confront him. And tell him if he doesn't repent, he will die. 
Sometimes you will need three days fasting and prayer to be able to generate enough life to take that step. But that's how you grow. You journey from consciousness to engagement. When you engage for a while, then you enter mastery. It's when you enter mastery that you have liberty of flexibility. You know, the first time I saw Benihim remove his suit and threw at people, they fell down. I went for a crusade. When I heard that the people were praying loud, I now say, there's energy in this hall now. I removed my suit. When I hit it on the person, he held it like this and gave me back. <laughs> you don't do what Benihim is doing. You travel until you get there. When you get there, life will give you your own flair. Because mastery comes with dimensions. Dimensions. You may not need to. There's a man called Andres Bisoni. He is of the offsprings of Benihim and people like Carlos and Carlos and Akondia. He drank from them, he drew from them until now when he comes for a meeting. When he's done preaching, everybody stand up, they gather. If he does like this, the whole people will fall down. He didn't need to do what Benihim was doing. As he journeyed in life, he entered mastery. And when he entered mastery, his own flair came out. So that the glory of God, you can see different dimensions of it. If all of us begin to copy Benihim, we will limit Jesus Christ. But the only way we can give Jesus access is when we grow in life. You will leave this meeting today and some of you will go back and begin to pay attention to the impulses of life. That's the deepest aspect of your Christianity. The deepest aspect of your Christianity is not what you are doing in church. It's not even what you felt. What you felt may leave after the meeting. But when you begin to master those impulses of the spirit, sometimes you will grow in it until it will break as a song. My friend Dunsin was a bass guitarist. But he grew in life until a point came, a voice broke out. And when he sings, you will know this is not a psalmist, this is a priest. Because what is coming out is the river that flow from the throne. When he's ministering, you can literally see the sea of glass. Because he's piping the dimensions of heaven. It will be a waste for you to look at somebody and want to copy. There's no room for copying in this world. This realm where we are, there's more than enough. We are interacting with El Shaddai. But if you have not journeyed in life, you will take the option of copying people. And when you copy, even if you are best, you will be second best. And God will not need you because he already has one of that order. There is something that God has planted in you that it will take life to get there. When you begin to travel on this path, Christianity has begun for you. The first ordinance of life is in knowledge. That knowledge is consciousness. That knowledge leads to engagement. And that knowledge leads to mastery. The second ordinance of life is yieldedness. This life does not just come to make you manifest. It's a government. Ah! Wait. Time is gone. Time is gone. Oh, Jesus. I wanted to, and this is where I wanted to ascend. Time is gone. You know, when you are dealing with life, the first thing it does is that it woos you. It will show you things. You will now come to a place, he will tell you, this cripple will walk. And then your pursuit will be, let cripples walk, let cripples. You are praying, you are fasting for one year. Oh, 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 Cripples will walk. Word of knowledge. That's the elementary. When life begins to grow in you, you will discover that he lured you. You will come to a point where it will now place a law over you. That's why in Romans chapter 8 verse 2, he called it the law of the spirit of life. When it comes, it will put a law over you. That law is what we call consecration. Consecration is not rules and regulation. Rules and regulation are necessary when you are beginning to guide yourself until you tap into life. When you come into life, you will now begin to touch the true tenets of consecration. The true tenets of consecration is inside. It flows from inside out. Discipline is from outside in. Consecration is from inside out. That's why he said, because thou lovest righteousness and hated iniquity. It wasn't something he was trying to do. He had built something on the inside that hates him. That's what causes him to align with God. So when life begins to grow in you, that life will teach you the way of consecration. It will bind you. It will keep you under severe government. And the way he does it is twofold. Number one is through hunger. 
when truly life begins to grow in you, you will discover that there is an uncontrollable and irresistible pull towards God. That's why I say, draw us and we will come after you. Draw us. We are not pursuing you because somebody told us to. We are being pulled towards you. Life will draw you so much. And the more a man stays in God's presence, the more the propensities of the flesh are mortified. So what we call consecration is actually a love engagement that makes you hate every other and desires only him. It is life that will bring you to true consecration. When you come to a place where they reduce consecration to laws and discipline, people will drift into secret sin. So you will, you see, you will come to church and act all pious. But when you go out, you know you are dying of lust. You know you are dying of masturbation because you didn't give life access. Life is actually the cure to your quagmire. But you first of all have to allow it grow until it becomes strong to dominate you. When life dominates you, the only thing that will be in your spirit will be hunger. A thirst for God. Even when the church is not fasting, you'll be fasting. And then you'll be shocked that one man will fast more than the whole church. That's why Paul said, I pray in tongue more than ye all. How can one man pray more than the church? It's hunger. Because he's not praying according to church calendar. He's praying according to the laws of life that suppressed him. So he has come under a government. These are the dimensions of true Christianity that is no longer found. That's why we have too many fake men. We were not taught that Christianity is not about church. We were not taught that Christianity is not just about gathering. We were not taught that Christianity is not about title and place in church. So we deceive people to pursue after places. I am the choir director. I am prophet this. I am apostle this. But this prophet, apostle, this choir director, this, this media head does not have a relationship with God. He doesn't know when hunger woke him up from sleep to pray. He doesn't know when hunger made him forget about dinner and he was with God. He doesn't know when hunger drove him to a secret place and he prayed there until it became too late to come home. Because it's not about relationship. We don't know true consecration. And every time consecration is not in place, a lot of things will go wrong. But when true consecration begins, it is the laws of life that binds you. The second way he does it is by a burden. In Mark 1.12, he said he was driven to the wilderness. He didn't want to go there. There was a burden that he could not deny. It came upon him so heavy and it began to tame him. If you understand true Christianity, you will become like Mount Zion. You will become like a fortress, a fortress that nothing can break because you, you, will, you will journey in the spirit. The activities in your spirit will be too much for you to notice external activities. Something will be happening in your spirit. It will be a rumbling. It will be so heavy that you will not notice when a brother spoke against you. Today, when somebody speaks against you, you go and create a gang. And then you sit down and you are strategizing. You are, they, where do you have such time? Where do you have such time? Today, we, we, when you see somebody doing well, you are looking for, you are full of envy. You want to kill yourself. How come? Why is it this person? How come you have so much time? What are the burdens that you carry? What are the things that drive you? It's so bad now that when you see people doing things, it's a reaction. Because A did it and succeeded. B too wants to do it. C too wants to do it. Instead of living, we are now reacting. Because there are no bodies. The weight of life is shallow. But when Jesus said, I am come. He didn't come to replace the things the devil took. No. If that was what Jesus came to do, it would have meant the devil was giving him assignment. The devil would have been sending him on an errand. He didn't come to replace the things the devil did. Jesus came to bring you into a world where the workings of the devil will count for nothing. Jesus came to introduce you to a realm and a dimension. You live in that dimension and everything the devil is doing counts for nothing. That's why I said the light shines in the darkness. The light doesn't even notice that darkness exists. He is too established in a dimension that darkness no longer counts. So what Jesus came to do was not to replace what the devil took. Jesus came to introduce you to a world. A world that brings you to a new civilization and make you become an extension of that world. So when you breathe, you bring that world to bear. When you speak, you bring that world to bear. Everything you do becomes an expression of that world. This is true Christianity. 
And when a man begins to live like this, he's actually begin to, beginning to grow into the fullness of the measure of the stature of Christ. Tonight, you will ask the Lord, Lord, give me another measure. Maybe the measure you have is not enough. The cares of this life have swallowed that measure. So because there's no house rent, you lose your prayer life. It's not your fault. The measure you have is not enough. Maybe the, the bitterness of people, the backbiting of people, became too strong for your measure and it choked it. Maybe the iniquity of your environment, everybody is fornicating, everybody is lying, everybody is doing yahoo yahoo. It has become so strong, it has choked you. Maybe the people living around you don't pray. They are just talking from morning to night and because you don't have enough measure, instead of colonizing them, they have colonized you. You want to ask the Lord this evening, give me another measure. Give me another measure. My goal this month is to show you the things that matter. Because if we begin to fly, you miss why we came. You won't know why we came. You think we came to do what others are doing. No. We came to teach you the way of the Spirit. And if you were aligned with it, you will mature in three months. Much more than you have grown in one year. Ask the Lord tonight. Another measure. Give me another measure. I know I'm a leader. I know I'm a pastor. I know that I'm popular. People call me names. But give me another measure. Give me another measure. Give me another measure. The measure I have, immorality crumbles it. The measure I have, backbiting crumbles it. The measure I have, lies crumbles it. Give me another measure. Yeah. Aliyah. quarrel and that quarrel in church is what chokes their life it's not even in the world do you know certain witchcraft is among brethren in church 
where we should come to absorb life. That's when many met death. Do you know certain persons is in their offices that they died from? The politics, the backbiting choked them and they died. Do you know some persons is in their businesses? There was not enough measure. If you don't have enough measure, your Christianity is religion because it's not about activities. It's a business of life. They say if you ask, you will receive. And if there's something I want you to ask tonight deliberately, is to ask for more life. There are too many things happening around you that wants to choke life out of you. And for some of us, we are already suffocating. We go to prayer, we can't pray anymore. We carry the Bible to read, we sleep off. We can't read the scriptures. Because life is choked. We are almost in the state of coma, spiritual coma. So you want to cry to the Lord. Pour more life upon me. Release more life. Ask him for life. we saw visions before things happen we pick them it was so strong that even before someone calls you you know if somebody is at the gate you know if evil is by the corner you know but suddenly the life have depleted that your sensitivity went with it there are some of us here we carried so much life that when we spoke things happen but now even when we are shouting nothing is going on anymore our activity level is increasing. Our titles are increasing. But life is going down. You want to ask God for life. Say measures. 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 Measures.
do you know most of the things we are asking for they are things that should be byproduct if we were growing in life i remember those days when i was about five years six years i couldn't carry a bucket of water if i attempt to carry it i will throw the whole water away before i get to the house today without praying i can carry two buckets and i can run with it it's not a prayer point our prayer points keep increasing because we don't grow in life there are many things you shouldn't bother god about if you grow in life many things that god wants to give you you can't handle them because you have not grown you are troubling god every day lord give me hey give me peace the same glow is your inheritance it is in growing that you enter how come you are asking for the things that should be naturally yours it's because growth is not a view activity is not replace it there are many things if you just grow they just happen naturally when i was younger my elder sisters they will insist i wash my leg every day my leg was as black as a mechanic no matter how I try to be neat, my leg must be dirty. Because we play football with football, with orange, with mango, everything. When we grew up, even if I don't shower till evening, my legs can't be dirty. You are struggling with many sins because you have not grown up. When you grow, you will discover some of those sins you are saying, God, help me, help me. Life will choke it. Life will choke it. You will not need to pray. You have grown too much in life for evil parts to come. You have grown. That's what Christianity is about. Asking for measures tonight. Too many things have been withheld from you because you have not grown. Most of you are calling is hungry because you have not grown. But now for a prophet. But when will you grow into the office? I know if you are an apostle, when will you grow into the office? That's why life blesses the man. Ask him one more time. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm seeing the Lord restoring some people's altars, prayer altars that have gone obsolete, that have become ashes. I'm seeing the work of the Spirit. They are groaning. They are groaning. The altars. 
are being activated. this level I may puncture through some things and I'm sensing the restraint in my spirit sensing the restraint sensing the restraint the hand of God is heavy upon us now but I want you to go home with this body I'm trying so hard to co co contain myself so that I draw your attention to the things that matter. Ah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Some of you will go home tonight and you will pray till morning. Many restorations, many restorations will take place. Because what you lost was not money. What you lost was not your health. What you lost was not a relationship. It was a weight of life that departed. That's why your health was attacked. That's why money left. That's why relationships began to break. As life returns, you will discover that restorations will take place. Amen. Thank you, Father. 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 Somebody with a neck, a neck challenge. From somewhere here, a neck challenge. I've just been healed. Turn your neck and check. Somebody has just been healed. Listen. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. Please lift your hands toward heaven. A day will come when we will begin to burn here. As you go home, everything you lost is restored. Everything the enemy took away from you is restored. In the name of Jesus. As you depart from here, all the requirements and the dictates of life that have departed from you is restored. Amen. There are some of you that have encounters in the spirit. There are some of you that journey in the place of prayer. There are some of you that, that you breathe by fasting. There are some of you that the word of God literally runs through your spirit like a stream. But these things were withdrawn. From today, all of those that you have lost, every spiritual dimension, Every grace or attribute of the spirit that you walked in before now that have been suspended in the name of Jesus, it is restored. Most of you will leave here and before the next meeting, you will say you laid hands on the sick, they recovered. Most of you will leave here and you will discover you will step into extraordinary favor because there was a favor that life provoked. Men gave you things freely. But suddenly it stopped. As you go back, that weight of favor that has left your life is returned in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every activity of the demonic that have lingered around you because of the new intensity and weight that is coming to you, those demons are banished in the name of Jesus. Amen. Because the night cannot stop the sun from rising. Not I declare over you, 
nothing stops your blessing nothing stops your prosperity nothing stop your progress in the name of Jesus most of you are shifting you have been in one spot for too long you are shifting by the spirit you are shifting there are new possibilities being allocated to you new possibilities have been allocated to you in the name of Jesus I bless your health I bless your home I bless your finances I bless your relationships I decree that everything you do in righteousness prospers in the name of Jesus none of you will be weak none of you will be small the least of you will be counted for a great nation in the name of Jesus those of you who are overseeing businesses overseeing families overseeing ministries in the name of Jesus Christ because it is connected to you I decree that it begins to enlarge it begins to enlarge it begins to enlarge a new altar of life comes upon it in the name of Jesus thank you father there are many people that have walked under the weight of reproach because of the causes of their father's house the causes of their ancestry there are many people that have walked under the weight of indignation I decree over you right now by the life of the Christos in the name of Jesus go forward and prosper and become exceeding great go forward and prosper and become exceeding great thank you father I'm seeing something like a growth in somebody's throat a growth in somebody's throat it has just gone you will check it and discover it has given you you, you have had difficulty even in swallowing that growth has just left you if you are the person can you wave at me a growth just left something that has made somebody so uncomfortable can I, can I see that person? You may not need to come out. And I also saw that somebody has been healed. There was a neck condition. You couldn't turn. You have just been healed. Can you wave at me? Thank you, Lord. You have just been healed. I'm seeing, I'm seeing an anointing come on someone. I'm seeing an anointing fall on someone suddenly. Suddenly. It's a grace for speed. And this person will begin to prophesy. I'm seeing an anointing descend on someone. In the name of Jesus, take it. Take it. Thank you, Father. Just help them where they are. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, hey. Somebody had a fractured ligament somewhere around the knee. It's like you had an accident and you've had this pain for a while. You can't, that leg creates, causes you so much discomfort. It looks like there's a, there was a fracture on the knee. You can check it now. You discover you have been healed. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. As you go home, please. I told you it's not about your title. It's not about your position in church. It's a journey into the fullness of the measure of Christ. And God designed it this way so that everybody will know it and can walk in it if they choose to. Never let any prompting of life go without a response. Christianity must be practiced. It's beyond excitement in church. It's beyond excitement in a meeting like this. When I travel out, I'm volatile. 
But God says to raise men. And one of the ways to do it is to show them the things that matter. It's beyond the excitement we have when we gather. It must be practiced. And if you really want to grow, before the next meeting, you will discover, some of you, the promptings will even intensify. Begin to pay attention to them. And see what God does with your life just in three months. You will know some things are bigger than impartations. Some things were implanted in you the day you received Jesus. You have just not paid attention to it. I am persuaded that the least one among us will be a strong nation. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for coming. The Lord bless you richly. Please be seated. In the next one month, we'll be having teaching series. Teaching series until certain emphasis have been fully established, then we can begin to unleash different dimensions that the Lord puts in our spirit. Please, let's receive Pastor Victor. I hope you enjoyed this video and I believe that you were blessed. If um, you were blessed by this video, make sure that you click on the share button and share it to a friend. And also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message. If you have any question, please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.